Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to generate a PowerPoint from your Expo React Native app. So first off I've run this command and I've imported the following. So importing star as file system from Expo file system, import the Expo sharing package and also import from that PowerPoint XGenJS file. I've also added a button that will generate the PowerPoint and created this method here that will be called when I press that button. So now let's get into the actual code for today. So this PowerPoint X Gen package allows you to create a new PowerPoint and write it to Base64, which you can then save locally and then into your, um, then share the file using the Expo sharing package. So I'm just gonna start off by showing you a very simple slide that's a slide with text. It's going to be a bullet point example, but I'll just add the title first and generate that so you can see the most simple use case. So you're going to want to specify where exactly your um, different parts of your UI are. And you can actually also generate a PowerPoint from HTML as well. There are lots of different options you can specify, so it's worth checking out the documentation, which I'll link in the description below. So now I'm just gonna show you how to write that. So for the PowerPoint, you'll call that write function and pass in base64. Basically what's it go what that's going to do is return some base64, which represents the file. So from that, we can create the file name using the file system package. And I'm just going to call it mypowerpoint.pptx. From there, we can go ahead and actually write that file. So we're going to want to write a string async, and we can pass in that base64 and the file name. We're also going to want to pass in the encoding type, which is base64. Once that file is saved there, we can actually go ahead and share it and that will allow us to save it to our um, own file systems and be able to access it outside of our app. So we'll just go sharing.shareasync and give the file name. Mr. Comma here, so I'm just going to fix that up. So now if I go to generate the PowerPoint and save to files, it's going to try and save my PowerPoint file. And if I head on over to files, I should see that file there. If I open it up, it should be just one slide because that's all I've added at this stage. And it's got that text, my bullet point example. So now that I've got that working, I'm going to go and actually add some bullet points in. So basically this add slide, um, function will return a slide and you can assign that to a variable if you want or you can just chain on these add text, add chart, add shape, add media, add table commands which will add different elements to your PowerPoint. So here I am adding in some more text and this is just going to be my first bullet point. I want to specify some options, so I'm just going to specify the font size. I'm going to specify the color of the font. I'm going to specify that this is a bullet point, And I'm going to specify the indent level. So I'm going to make that one red. I'm going to give it an indent level of zero, which will be basically the least indented bullet point item. Then I'm going to copy that and paste it three times. So 
So I'm going to go and make the third one indent level one, just so you can see the, that it goes out to a new indent level and then back in. And I'm also going to change the color of that to blue. I'm also going to change the text to just be my bullet point list. So you can easily differentiate each of these text items. So yeah, add text itself will also return a slide and that's why you can chain the calls of adding different UI elements. I'm now gonna go and set that position. I'm just gonna make it 0.5x and, and y of one. So that will put it below that um, title that I've already added. So now that I've saved that, I can go and generate my new file. And if I go and save that to files, I should be able to keep both just in case you want to compare and go to my files and I'll see two files there. My latest one is my PowerPoint 2. And if I open that, you can see I've got my bullet point list with the text and red for the first two, blue for the third and red for the fourth. So this package is actually quite powerful. It'll, powerful. It actually allows you to create master slides as well and use that as a template. I'm not going to show you that today, but if you are interested, please let me know and I can add another tutorial on it. There are also some demos that you can sort of go ahead and see if you want to. Um, and you can set the background of a slide as well. So I'm just going to set this one to a path, which can be like a URL um, or a local path. And I'm going to specify a URL and I'm just going to add a background to my slide. So if I save that now and go to generate PowerPoint, I've created a new slide with a background. So if I save that to files, I'm gonna keep them all just because I want to be able to compare them if I wanted to go back or if you wanted to go back, you could. And I'm going to go to my PowerPoint free. You can see I've got a second slide there and it's got a background image. So that's just that image there. I'm going to commit this code to my GitHub repo so you can have a look at any point if you want to. I'm also going to add some text to the slide just to show that that's in the background and this will come on top of it. I'm going to provide that font size. And make it nice and big so it's easy to read. I'm going to show you that you can actually specify the position using a percentage of where you want it located on the screen. Noting that um, that will actually start in that position, the top left corner of the UI element that you're adding. So I'm just going to show you how you can see that it'll be quite obvious with this text when I run it. So basically the top left of that text will be in the center of that slide. And that includes like margin and padding and all that sort of thing. So if I go look at my newest PowerPoint, you can see that that text is over in the left corner and that's because it's starting at 50% and uh, of the X and Y um, and that's um, where it ends up. So I'd probably better position this at x0 and y0 or perform some calculations about where it might be best placed. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another slide. And what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you adding some media. So you can add things like videos to the slide and specify a cover for them. So I'm going to go add media and I'm going to actually link to one of my YouTube videos. So 
So I'm specifying a type as online. You can see the different options if you go to the documentation for the PPT X Gen JS um, package. And there's also lots of demos on things like how to use charts and stuff like that. And if you do want me to do a demo, just let me know. You can actually specify a cover fo um, photo as well. Um, so you can specify that you want a specific image to be the cover and you specify that with um, base64 encoding. I'm not going to bother today, so it's just gonna be a boring sort of gray screen. But yeah, if I wanted a specific thumbnail, then I could do that. Cool, so now that's saved, I'll go ahead and generate my PowerPoint. And we should have three slides. We should have my first one with my bullet point example, my second one with my background image, and my final slide with the YouTube um, video available. So you can see I've got my three different slides. Welcome's been repositioned because I chose to reposition that. And I've got my YouTube video available as well. And it's taking up the full screen because I specified width and height of 100%. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. All my code will be available on GitHub. And if you've liked this content, please like and subscribe for more.